Hi, my name is Chris Postlife. It is um, it is Friday, uh, the second of June, two thousand and seventeen. So today, what I wanted to talk about was um, I wanted to talk about um, tampering with our network video recorder. Uh, so this is being done by the Anglican um, the Anglican um, uh, students at Moore Theological Bible College and um, their collaborators and it was um, quite a while ago so in 2016 this video was machine was tampered with um, so that indicates to me that and the quick tempo and the quick speed with which they got into the machine and were tampering and deleting and owning the machine indicates to me that they that they easily um, can uh, have, have a database or a knowledge base of several devices and that they can quickly when uh, they recognize the identify a device they can quickly access the device and own it and um, control it and I think that they've been doing this for a very very long period of time and I think that the students that come to the Bible College here have access to resources and are taught how to do this and um, so the and uh, the video footage that I'm going to show you shows tampering, um, tampering with video feeds, disconnecting cameras from video feeds, and also uh, tampering with the device, um, deleting footage, and uh, to cover up for the deleted space, they time stretch video, um, and they do this all remotely because I was in my unit when it was happening. I was sitting right at the machine when they were doing this, and um, I, the the unit wasn't left empty. Um, I, I think that it's likely impossible that they came in uh, in the middle of the night when we were sleeping and tampered with the machine. Or, but the thing is, is these deletions were being done real time, so it was being done remotely. So um, another thing is that the machine, was, the network video recorder, was in um, a makeshift Faraday cage. Um, it wasn't uh, perfect or anything, but it did cancel out. It did. Um, isolate uh, a cell phone with a 3G uh, signal so it didn't at least isolate 3G at least in the location that the camera was in the machine and so um, whatever frequency they were using to access the machine was not 3G it was above or below that frequency which is interesting to know uh, and um, like I said I don't have good equipment to test so it may not have completely isolated the machine but like I said it stopped a 3G single signal so another thing is is that the machine, nor neither the machine nor the cameras, had um, wireless or Bluetooth. The machine had Ethernet. I changed all the passwords for all the accounts on the machine, and um, I I think that the cameras may have passwords um, to access the cameras, but you have to go through the machine through the network. That indicates that if they were going through the machine through the cameras because the cameras, then that means that the cameras themselves, they're accessing the cameras, and the cameras themselves do not have wireless or Bluetooth. So they were accessing the motherboards, not motherboards, logic boards on the cameras, when the cameras did not have wireless or Bluetooth. Either way, um, accessing a video recorder or accessing the cameras to tamper with the video and get access to the system, they are accessing a system remotely and they're accessing a system that has no Bluetooth and wireless. So there's a back door into the um, into the logic boards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through there and through and show you. Um, there's one video where I think that they uh, drop uh, a stick, uh, use it as marker footage, and then uh, practice deleting. What they want to do is they want to delete footage so that I can't catch them doing the things that they, the crimes that they want to do. I can't catch people coming in and out. So uh, people that are helping uh, games fully with his or training, going into his unit, they don't want that to be seen. So they would delete the footage, and then the person would go into the unit, help him with his gear, help him with his hacks, whatever, and then leave, and it would never show up on video. Plus, they wanted access to the machine, and they wanted access to the video feeds because they're control freaks, and um, they're nuts in the head, and they have to know everything. So uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it, but what I'm doing is I'm clicking through one frame at a time so that the frame comes up and you can see it. This video is 25 frames a second, so I'm clicking through one frame at a time. I hope you can hear it. Properly correct. But the, uh, there. 
See? So I'll just rewind it a second there. The, uh, there. See? I'll just do it one more time. Correct. But the, uh, there. Okay, so, uh, there's the, there's the, uh, uh, stick uh, that I think they propped up and I think they just wanted to delete the other footage so um, it's only there for one frame okay so it's been sitting on that one frame I'm just gonna click it and then you'll hear or you'll see the um, frame. the object disappear I'll, I'll click one frame you'll hear it click and then it'll disappear watch So I don't know exactly what they did, but um, uh, I've noticed this kind of thing in other places too. So for example, I had a motion sensor camera set up in my unit, and uh, there would be um, uh, one image uh, that wasn't triggered, didn't mo nothing moved. The camera moved in one image, but um, all the other images that should have shown up surrounding that one image were gone, and there was just one image there. I have no idea why this this happens but uh, it happened several times uh, before too when I had a camera set up in the unit trying to catch them entering our unit okay so in this next uh, uh, clip what happens is um, uh, I, I mentioned several times that uh, most of the people living in this building almost all of them are Anglican Bible College students but there's one guy in here that is kind of like a I think he has access to or at least they, they, I think they show him how to do things and he does things for them so that he can uh, give them deniability so that they can say we're not doing anything and then he can deny it as well. He's not with uh, the more theological Bible college, but I think he has a relationship with them and I've been told that he has a relationship with him. So um, I think um, this video here, what happens is his stepson um, uh, and his girlfriend the stepson and the stepson's girlfriend come walking out one day. The stepson had this big cocky grin on his face and the girlfriend too. They walked by the cameras and the girl stood there and went like this. Put her thumbs up and made like a little dance in the camera. And uh, uh, I took note of it because it was obvious to me what they were doing. I think that it was obvious that they were being markers because they were doing it all day and the day before. And everybody was involved in it. And uh, I went back to the uh, video later and it was gone. And uh, I noticed um, in another camera feed that the time stamp had uh, was sped up, so the video was being stretched to fill in the empty space of lost uh, deleted footage. But I don't know how they did it, and um, um, I don't know how they deleted the footage. All I know is that it was there at one time, and then it was gone. So it shows to me several things. It shows to me that um, this guy that claims not to be an Anglican is involved with the uh, um, with the college is involved with is involved with uh, the church and whatever is going on here and uh, the property manager um, whatever is happening and um, also that um, he uh, being the scumbag that he is uses um, other people to do his dirt and also that um, that the Anglican um, community here um, utilizes third party to draw attention away from themselves and to draw heat off themselves so they can say it wasn't us, it wasn't us. So I'm going to show you that right now. So I'm going to rewind that. This is uh, uh, where the video is. is the there. It's that's there. seconds, so it's hours, minutes, seconds. So look at how fast the seconds are going. So the time, the time is stretched. You can see in the top video, uh, I can't, uh, if I pull back, if I widen the, um, the view, uh, you, you won't be able to see the numbers, but you can see the, the, the wind blowing the leaves, and you can see that the top, in it, the top camera is in real time, and the bottom of the camera is being sped up. The, if, I widen, if I widen the camera and the depth of view, um, 
or the depth of field, if I widen the field of view, you won't be able to see the numbers very well, so I, I can't show both uh, numbers. There, and then it stops because uh, that's when the, the act, that's when the vi video is deleted. It stops when it comes as soon as it, as soon as it get, catches up to the top of um, screens, it stops uh, speeding up. So here's the time, and another thing that's interesting too is you look at these, and when, when a camera is lost, there should be um, gaps in the timeline, and it should show as white or it should show as alarm, I can't remember what it is, yellow maybe? But there's nothing, nothing is showing up. Uh, even though the the screen, even though they do delete um, or they do disconnect a uh, camera from the feed, it doesn't show up in the timeline. So that's tampering as well. Check it out. What's happening there? So I'll just rewind that. What's happening there? And it, the real time is so the real time is uh, ten fifty one, and the on the bottom one. There, see, 10.51.07, and it's going in, it's going normal, but the bottom one is 10.41, and, um, or there, it's 39, see, it's, it's about t way behind, uh, and the top is far ahead, like 10.51, it's like 10 minutes, there, see, 10.51, it's 10 minutes behind. So that's 10 minutes of footage that was deleted. So you see? So that is deleted footage and then they, they stretch the time. To cover for the deleted footage. As soon as it comes up to the time and catches in, up and synchronizes, it stops. So there, see the the top the the top two are the same, but the bottom one is off. And as soon as it catches up, it it slows and stops. There, see. There's regular speed because it's in sync. It's in sync. See? So, um, it's very clear to me that, um, uh, that, that this is very advanced, uh, this is very advanced hacking, and I think that's why, for many, many reasons, um, uh, I, I think, and many things that I've seen, laws that have been passed here in Australia, uh, Rufus Black, he's an Anglican and all his nonsense with the metadata retention. He was champion of metadata retention and all the um, uh, cybersecurity um, centers that are popping. They want a cybersecurity center in every in every place, uh, every major city in, in Australia, Perth, Brisbane, uh, Darwin, uh, Sydney, Canberra, everywhere. And I don't think this has anything to do with national security or defending against terrorism or bad Muslims or anything like that. I think it's just, these are Christians. These are the worst people I've ever seen in my life, ever. Non, no argument. Full stop. And, uh, and it has nothing to do with security. It has nothing to do with national security. These people are like a cult. And this, is, this group is, is like a mafia. They're like a militia. They're well organized. They, they have access to information that I've never uh, ever heard of. Uh, remote accessing machines with no Bluetooth and wireless, excuse me, uh, is that is not, not a breach of trust? As far as I can see, every single device, um, they've they access um, a power PC. 
it's over 10 years old. Uh, one gigahertz, 17 inch power PC, a titanium power PC. They accessed it and I, I ripped out everything. I ripped out the air, airport, I ripped out the wireless, I ripped out the Bluetooth, I even ripped out the modem. Everything on that machine except for the Ethernet. And the machine had no hard drive. And the machine was running on um, an external system, an external hard drive. So, I mean, uh, um, I don't know how they're doing this, but the technology is really advanced, and the technology indicates to me, the old power PC, that they can access machines uh, that are old, and so that this, uh, whatever they're using to access the logic boards, has been there for a very long time. So I think they've probably been able to do this for a very, very long time, which is a complete breach of trust. All them years, people buying computers, thinking that the computers were their own, and then they're accessing them through back doors, through hardware back doors. Uh, I don't think this is right. I think this is a breach of trust, and then on top of that, the breach of trust that these people are supposed to be going to Bible college, and they're supposed to be um, standing up in front of church preaching. The one guy there preaching, the next door neighbor, James Fulfley, um, um, he he was uh, here for several years, and, and now apparently he's got a church job, and he's standing up at the pulpit preaching in front of everybody when he was here being a horrible person. Um, uh, for a long period of time, showing his true character, which is scum. And uh, here he is standing up in front of the uh, church, so he goes and does all these bad things. And then he gets a job. And then he gets a job in a, uh, in a church. So um, I think it's completely wrong. There's a breach of trust with, um, with these uh, Anglican students that are supposed to be clergy, studying to be clergy, and they're supposed to be working, uh, you know, doing the Lord's work, doing Jesus' work. Uh, serving the community, and here they're um, um, accessing um, unaware, people unaware accessing, we were not aware, we did not give them permission to access our machines. They accessed our machines and they deleted footage they, um, from our MVR, and they accessed our, uh, our, our computers, they deleted um, data, they wiped uh, our computers, they um, destroyed three of our computers. So um, by destroyed, I mean on two, they wiped out the data, and then on the third, on another, they um, um, made it so that uh, they, they sh um, flashed uh, the ROM, or not the ROM, the uh, EEPROM or the BIOS, because the, the video drivers were lost, and I was getting like spaghetti code on the screen, and I couldn't boot up. It was just garbage. It didn't work anymore. So... Um, I think they uh, uh, burnt the BIOS, or they um, flashed the um, the EE prompt. Uh, so the startup drivers, there was nothing there, so it's just the, the machine didn't know what to do with the video, um, the graphical, you no know, graphical drivers. So it goes on and on and on and on, and like I said, that video was 2016, and um, um, they uh, did much more, they did more of the same. But I just wanted to show you that, just to show you, uh, in fact, that they were um, uh, time-stretching video, that they were deleting uh, footage, and that they do work in conjunction with each other. Okay, so in this video, um, what is happening here is... Uh, um, I've got uh, one guy here keeps walking back and forth all day. He walks out in front of our unit all day and real slow. Um, uh, it's interesting, interesting because he, I think what they're trying to do is they're also not only are they trying to delete footage and have people marking you for deletion of footage, but also they're trying to see how slow they have to walk to avoid the motion sensor. So um, what, uh, this time, this here at this point is 1502, but the top. Um, cam cameras, the two top cameras are 1508, so there's a, a 16 minute uh, difference between the, the cameras. And, and it's getting confused. I have no idea. What so there, you see, um, there's a video loss. There's a lost feed. So, okay. there's me. <laughs> Sorry about that. So there's the time. In there, see it, it delete it off again.
going super fast. The top is going slow. And the bottom disappears. It goes super fast before it disappears. I'll try and rewind it and catch it again, but the doing it's difficult to see. So here we can see the top is going slow. See, and the top is um, uh, 1518, and the bottom is 1502. Okay, so it's going slow. It's running at a normal sp speed, and then, and then, uh, see that they're. So that's another example of time stretching.